Good morning. Good morning. How's it going? Good morning, Jess. How are you? I Good love and you. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks. Can you let Trader Joe up and Blue as well? Yes. Let me invite to speak. And Blue. Good morning. Good morning, Blue. Good morning, Blue. Welcome. Everybody's having a good week. We're... Oh, it feels amazing. Right? I was just thinking that, like, the vibes two weeks ago in this space were, like, so down. And now we are back. We are fucking back. Excuse my language. <laughs> everybody's everybody's coming back over from threads y'all they're all making like the mass exit from threads back to twitter i knew it happened in less time than i thought even on pumped it that's why he's brought crypto twitter back yeah yeah definitely definitely a good time we'll just give it a minute for everybody to to get up on stage uh we're happy to be back for another episode of crypto and coffee Today, um, for the first part of our show, we got Trader Joe here. We're going to be talking a little bit about what they got going on, talking some DeFi. So super excited about that. I see Dow is up here as well. What's up, Dow? Hey, good morning, guys. I uh, hope everybody is, is uh, sober from the hangover and the party that they did last night, whether it was a virtual party or real life party. Uh, I, I know the XRP army is still in that bunker with bottles of champagne and all kinds of uh, drugs and, um, you know, party favors. So I uh, hope everybody's doing good and not to hang over from the party. Good to hear. What about you, Tammy? How's your week been? My week's been busy. As you know, it's, it, it was a wonderful day yesterday, obviously. That was exciting news um, to get. And uh, I forgot it was Thursday yesterday. So I messaged Jess last night. I was like, holy shit, it's Thursday. So we got to get prepared for today. Um, but I had a great week. I hope everybody else did too. Hey, I wanted to let you know, I'm trying to bring Trader Joe up, but for some reason, I don't know if he needs to leave and come back. Um, That's right. That's fine. We got the speakers up here. If the account wants to come up. We got Blue and David here from the Trader Joe team. So Welcome, guys. How's it going? Yeah, thank you. Go going great. How how much better than this could go? It just has to continue, right? And right before Eve CC, so, you know, the party's going to be wild next Yeah, week. it's going to be good times. Before we kick it off, uh, just a quick disclaimer. Nothing said here is financial advice. This is strictly for entertainment and educational purposes. Um, but before we kick it off, I usually start um, by asking our guests what kind of coffee they drink. But I'm going to change. Do you guys drink coffee? I guess that's my first question. I'm going to change it up a little okay. bit this week. Can I go first as Italian no in residence? <laughs> uh, i'm sorry you said yes yes indeed okay, like, oh, uh, okay but, but you see you're um it sounds like you're from italy so yes, i'm exactly I'm, th like the level of coffee and my questions are going to be like so off because i was going to ask you starbucks or dunkin donuts you're probably oh going to say no, neither no. <laughs> <laughs> well, sorry I, damn it he's about to leave uh, uh, so i do respect <laughs> coffee chains uh, abroad but as a proper italian i have my own coffee machines yeah yeah so, uh, so what do you drink as uh, so yeah so i'm gonna i'm gonna cross out my questions because they are totally u.s based um what do you drink for coffee <laughs> what's in your cup so Italians actually love a mixture of Robusta and Arabica. We do not like 100% Arabica, which is mostly what people abroad or marketing usually try to push uh, as a good, creamy, all-rounded coffee has to have a good balance of Robusta, which gives that nice flavor and texture and cream in a proper espresso and the Arabica just to make the flavor deeper. Love it. Love it. I know, Dal, you could probably relate to that. You, you're you into the fancy stuff. I'm a simple girl. What about 
I, I tried, I tried, but we got some really good uh, Colombian coffee and Brazilian coffee. I found out they do some amazing uh, espresso, and they got a, I think Corto, which is like a double espresso, but somehow it actually tastes smooth. Yeah. What about you, Blue? Before we kick it up, what's in your cup? Oh, I'm I'm all about the 100% Starbucks blend, personally. <laughs> Uh, I'll tell you what, though. Actually, recently, I've started to replace some of my morning espressos with uh, ginger shots. Uh, and I've got to tell you, it's a proper biohack. It's very, very good. You should try it. It's, uh, I, I, so if you have, like, it's almost like 50% juiced or strained ginger that's blended up, and then you mix it with pineapple. Uh, so it's really strong, but it gives you the same kind of vibe as coffee. It's honestly really good. Interesting. I, I, I heard about it real quick, and, and I, the mix that I heard was pineapple, uh, ginger, and, and then olive oil. Uh, it's a really, really good mix. Olive oil? Oh, no, definitely not. Uh, so it's basically uh, what I do is I – olive oil. <laughs> um, I, so it's about 250 grams of ginger with like a tin – or like a full pineapple and you and you just like blend that all up strain it uh, and then you probably get about four or five ginger shots from that i've i've heard that olive oil is one of the latest fashions of drinking one or two spoons for breakfast yeah man i'll stick to my this normal espresso with a little bit of almond milk but no great great that everybody's trying to stay healthy we need you guys because we are back we are so back. But yeah, let's go ahead and kick it off. Um, so so yeah, thank you guys again for coming. Let's talk a little bit of DeFi and what you guys got going on. So Trader Joe has been around since 2021. You guys recently la- uh, started on Avalanche and has since then expanded. Um, you know, I mentioned it last week on the show and they thought I was having uh, the grocery store, which is a grocery store here. So some of my audience doesn't know about you guys. So I'd love for you guys to just give an overview of uh, what Trader Joe is and what you guys, uh, yeah, give us a little overview. Yeah, sure. I can take that one. So, um, yeah, as you as you kind of introduced us, so Trader Joe is a decentralized exchange. Uh, and so basically we give people the ability to swap tokens instantly at low cost. Uh, the platform was launched, uh, yeah, middle of 2021 on Avalanche. Um, you know, we saw some great success and traction since then and sort of our lifetime value, uh, sorry, our lifetime volume places us in the, the top five DEXs of all time. Um, and, you know, we'd like to think we've done that by really kind of focusing on also building a great community and offering uh, a really kind of clean, user-friendly experience when, you know, traders want to swap tokens. Uh, so we launched an avalanche, but we've also expanded the DEX outwards. Um, so at the start of the year, we deployed onto Arbitrum uh, and then shortly went on to uh, BSC chain as well. Um, and, you know, to pair with the DEX, we've kind of also built a one-stop shop DeFi. So, you know, we have yield farming. We've got our own money market called Banker Joe. That's an avalanche. Uh, and then we also built kind of a standalone NFT marketplace called Joe Pegs. Uh, and then I guess just to wrap that up more recently, what we've also been doing is, you know, we've been innovating in our field. So we built a new automated market maker. It's called Liquidity Book. It kind of offers a hybrid order book AMM experience. Um, it is the most capital efficient AMM and DeFi. Uh, and that is live on Avalanche Arbitrum and BNB, uh, BNB as well. So yeah, that's uh, Trader Joe in a nutshell. Yeah, we love Trader Joe. Yeah, somebody who dabbled around, uh, who was part of, who is still part of the Avalanche ecosystem. I remember, you know, that was the the go to decks on AVAX. So so now what what we're seeing with uh, there's so many decks out there. So like. What makes uh, Trader Joe unique? I know, um, you know, we've recent we we hear a lot about the layer zero integration. Can we talk uh, maybe some of the points that makes Trader Joe's unique from other DEXs out there? Yeah, we started as a team of builders that was very small at the beginning, uh, just uh, two co-founders, and quickly grew into a team of well-rounded quant, BD, marketing, and developers. Developers are 
part and core uh, of the Trader Joe team. And that's what we have done uh, since uh, we started getting the first uh, bit of traction. A few months after launch, we started building our first protocol, starting from uh, uh, small uh, ideas in, and uh, the initial uh, the initial project into our own custom AMM, as Blue anticipated. So one of the key differences between the Trader Joe liquidity book AMM and everyone else is that liquidity book, the core product of, of Trader Joe now, which is the product released, uh, mostly and only released on Arbitrum and BNB chain, for example, is that it's entirely custom made after one year of research uh, and development of a team that really worked very hard to bring to the world the most efficient protocol that was in existence, knowing what every everything that was successful around and having learned a lot uh, through our year of success, we could analyze what was needed in the market and that brought our own uh, vision of how con a concentrated liquidity protocol should have been. So the, the main reason why we are different is that we build everything ourselves at this point. And, we, uh, and, and therefore, we have the freedom to create Apple-style approach of integrating new features directly into our product without having to use third-party technologies that might be limited or will not work for us and get the support, of course, of all our partners into something that is unique and and anyway get supported this is also one of the reasons why uh, we partner with rare zero another great team with their unique take on uh, on omni chain uh, token bridging and the joe token expanded from being just an avalanche token to a omni chain token uh, now available on Arbitrum and BNB at the same time. And Layer Zero has been a great partner with us as we have positioned our DEX also as a hub for all uh, Layer Zero token on the chains where we are and try to work closely to make sure that projects looking to move into an omni-chain space will find their partner into assisting them in how to move a token on another chain and how to uh, get the attention of the users on the chain that they're reaching. Yeah, I wanna, I wanna build off that slightly as well. David is, you know, gave a great oversight there. Um, and we can we can happily dive into more technical product details and liquidity book uh, if you wanna dive in, but I'm imagining people might be a bit hungover for that considering yesterday. But I, you know, I just wanna add on like, you know, we, we have such strong internal conviction in, you know, the, the mission of Trader Joe. And like, ultimately, what we're trying to do here with our platform is to, um, is to make DeFi easy, right? And, and we fundamentally feel that that is uh, best achieved by you know, delivering simple solutions that offer users a great product experience. Uh, and, and we only feel like that is possible with building you know, the entire stack that we offer ourselves um, because that is the best way that you can integrate uh, your own products is, you know, obviously by integrating them uh, in terms of the products you've already built, right? That's, that's the best way to kind of scale up and, uh, and deliver against, you know, um, our mission of making DeFi easy for users. So that's, you know, where we are now is everything that we want to offer our users is in-house built, is custom built, is, is following research. And, uh, you know, we take a really kind of careful, diligent approach with how we go about rolling out new features and, and solutions in this space. Great to hear. Dow, any questions or comments? And I'll throw it around to the rest of the speakers. Yeah, I uh, love that we have the, the guys from Sergio uh, on the panel today. I think this is an amazing team. Uh, and just to bring a little bit of context, right? If you look at uh, DeFi Llama and you look at categories, uh, DEXs uh, are the 
in the top three, right? In terms of a uh, combined TVL, we have like uh, 15 billion, right? So there's liquid staking, there's lending, and uh, neck and neck with lending is DEXs, right? But the difference, if you look at the number of protocols, that's when it gets really interesting. There's about 900 uh, DEXs out there, right? Which the point that was made earlier that Trader is, is its own code, right? It's not a fork of yet another version of Uniswap or a VS Chrome model fork, right? It's its own code. I, I think that says a lot, right? And it's a very highly competitive uh, ecosystem, right? We have different decks on different chain. So, so I kind of like to hear, like, because obviously when we look at decks, right? Like, uh, if I look at it from my point of view, right? I'm looking at it as a as someone who's just trading, right? But there's also liquidity providers. Uh, there might be uh, other actors. How do you guys make yourself different than other DEXs, right? What priorities do you have when you're designing for different actors, when designing for liquidity providers, and when you're designing for, let's say, traders? What are priorities for each actor? Oh, wow, that's a great question, you know. Um, liquidity providers are key. And indeed, liquidity is normally defined as rented liquidity, but we have learned that liquidity providers actually want real yield because DEXs get farmed to death and most of these forks just uh, are born to emit a token to zero and we are not there uh, to participate into this. We are, our focus is in what we are building is towards volume. Uh, volume means uh, fees also for liquidity providers, so it goes in tandem uh, with, uh, with the desire of providing the best experience to liquidity providers so that they can make their liquidity as effective as possible. So liquidity book objective is maximum capital efficiency. And we created, because with this in mind, the most capital efficient AMM model in the space because uh, we have actually seen it with numbers with the least amount of TVL in the right market conditions. We can do a more volume than any other DEXs out there. We have seen a liquidity book generate 10 to 15 times the volume per TVL that was on liquidity book uh, in certain high volatility market days. And every single day we see, we see five to seven X efficiency of specific markets that are very deep. And deep liquidity is indeed the objective. Uh, in the range, as a concentrated liquidity protocol, you want as much efficient liquidity as possible. That's why we also have uh, mechanisms like market maker rewards to incentivize the top market makers that provide liquidity where it's needed. And it is one of these biggest difference. People go on the Falama and search top decks by TVL, but TVL can also be a liability if it's unused because someone has to has to incentivize it and we want real yield to be the reason why liquidity is attracted to Trader Joe's liquidity book. Yeah, what about sustainability uh, and efficiency? Like, I'm sure all aligned with how DeFi is likely going to grow over the coming years, right? So we still want to be a Dexas here in 10 years' time, 20 years' time, when, uh, you know, obviously Dexas will be more used than, uh, than sexes are, right? Um, and so you, how we built Liquidity Book is by ensuring that it is a real yield um, generating AMM, that liquidity providers can be served with enough yield that keeps them happy to be there, uh, but also for traders as well. Um, we it, we use uh it's uh, so in, instead of most uh, AMMs using a constant product formula, uh, we apply a constant sum formula. Uh, and for traders, this gives them um, a if the liquidity is there, if it's serving to for their swap, this gives traders the ability to swap tokens at essentially a one for one transfer value. So there's no there's no loss through slippage, um, and if it's trading within one bin. You know, there's obviously no price impact there. So it's a, it's a really powerful AMM 
not just for liquidity providers, but also for traders. Um, and, and that's for any size as well, providing there's liquidity. So, um, yeah, the, you know, those are the kind of two key value propositions of, uh, of what we're building at Trader Joe. It's all centered around efficiency and sustainability. And when we look at that, our that, metrics now, I just wanted to add a bit more on what you were saying about the DEX overview. What we look at when we look at DeFi Llama is actually volume. So we don't look at DEX by TVL, we look at DEX by volume and being on the top of that list. Well, we're more about fees, right? Sort of about fees. Yeah, we are number seven worldwide across all DEXs in this exact day. And we are constantly between five and seven, eight. As of now, our goal is, of course, to be the one with the highest volume. But volume is our is what matters to us. I, I, I love to hear it. And, and the point that you guys have made about capital efficiency and sustainability, I, I, I speak in the context of, I think it was last week that we just heard that uh, the, the Central Bank of, of Switzerland and France and Singapore were using a fork of curve so, like, all those different models of DEXs are about to be studied by central bankers around the world. So, it's just amazing to hear, and I'm sure we'll have the opportunity to hear more about the different models uh, and, and the different trade off that people are making in that design ecosystem. So, it's to, to me, like, if you're in DeFi, you have to really take some time to learn about DEX, how to design, and, and what they focus on, because it's probably going to be some of those things that we use by economies around the world in the next 50 years from now. No, I think that's interesting that um, just the whole concept about looking at, you know, volume and not TVL, because you're right, people go to, you know, that's the first thing I look at was the TVL. And now that you guys are speaking on it, it all makes sense. So, um, but yeah, so you talked about some of the unique features of Trader Joe. Um, could we maybe for, for some in the audience that are not as techie, like what does that mean from a user perspective? What are some of the benefits as me, as, you know, somebody, uh, as a DeFi user who wants to either provide liquidity or, or move across chain? Like what are some of the benefits with some of the unique features of Trader Joe's for a user? Yeah, sure. So uh, we offer traders the best rates on their swaps. We offer liquidity providers the highest real yield for their liquidity. Uh, and if you want to transfer across different chains to Trader Joe because of because of the OFT integration, um, it's seamless. Uh, it's a seamless experience. It's cheap. Uh, it's fast, uh, and it's safe as well. Could you elaborate OFT? You're throwing out a new acronym that maybe a lot of people haven't heard of. What is an OFT? You know, uh, maybe you want to go into that a little bit. Yeah, sure. So uh, uh, OFT stands for Omnichain Fungible Token. Um, and so I guess a bit of context is OFT is the, a new contract standard from layer zero, which is uh, an interoperability messaging protocol. Um, and basically it uses a novel technique to uh, connect blockchains uh, and, and dApps across different ecosystems. But, um, and sort of facilitating a, a better kind of messaging between them. So you, know, and you can kind of visualize that's why it's called layer zero, because it's kind of like a foundational piece that sits below uh, blockchains, you know, layer ones, layer twos, et cetera. And it kind of connects them all together. So you can imagine like a, a switchboard for telephones. That's kind of like what layer zero does. It's, it's facilitating communication, um, you know, uh, more securely, more safely, more seamlessly. Um, than kind of existing offerings in the space. And, and, and yeah, so uh, Trader Joe, um, our token is uh, the Joe token, uh, and we integrated um, Layer Zero's OFT contract standard. So this is kind of like evolving Joe from, you know, being a kind of a basic ERC20 contract standard where it lives on Avalanche. Um, integrating this omni-chain fungible token standard means that Joe can now be seamlessly transferred across different ecosystems. So wherever we deploy uh, the DEX, such as Arbitrum and BNB and you know, more chains soon, uh, it means that we can seamlessly move Joe across those, you know, across the gaps between these blockchains um, with our DEX. Uh, and that's as far as my technical understanding goes of, of how it actually works. But, you know, that is uh, at higher level uh, what this kind of OFT standard gives the Joe token. It's basically 
changing it from um, a an avalanche based token uh, and turning it into you know what we're expecting the future of DeFi to be, right? And that's a multi chain token. Love that bullish on a multi chain future. Go ahead, David. I see you on mic, and then we'll go to Sol. Oh no, sorry. Blue actually gave a great explanation uh, on what a uh, OFT token is. So uh, very happy about his answer. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I- <laughs> I'm a happy general manager, Davide. I don't have to build up with what I'm saying. That's good. <laughs> What's up, Sol? Good morning. What's going on? Good morning. I missed the part when you were talking about what's in our cup. Uh, I was drinking from Hacienda Muniz from uh, Puerto Rico that I recently got on my trip. It's delicious. <laughs> but Nice. Enjoy. Well, yeah, thanks. Part of my question, which was already answered, because <clears throat> I was talking to a DeFi company actually just before this space. I was on a call with them. Um, about like cross chain and, and stuff you're working on. So it's cool to see that you guys are, are doing that. And I do think like DeFi is going to be huge kind of coming up right now. Obviously it's just kind of slow with bear market stuff. I haven't really played with too much DeFi since bull market kind of ended. Um, but my, my question also, as far as like user base, like where's the majority of your user base? Uh, just cause like the company, like I said, I was talking with earlier, the majority of theirs was in, uh, was in China and then second was in, in the USA. But they're based out of China, so it only makes sense as that's where the, the majority of their user base is. But I was just curious uh, about you guys. Yeah, David, do you yeah. Want to take that? Well, most mean, of our it's... team is European based. It's actually something quite unique when we talk around, uh, but we have many team members from different European countries France, Italy, UK, and beyond. Uh, but uh, for example, uh, I, almost half of our team is going to meet at ITCC next week because it's behind the corner. We have quite a big French quota in our devs. and uh, Yeah, we got loads of French devs, which typically doesn't get good praise from crypto Twitter. Why is that? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. There's, I, there's a lot of French devs. It's a, it's a really... It's um yeah really uh, big population that uh, are, you know are doing engineering and stuff in crypto, but uh, they they often have a bad name for themselves. <laughs> but I got I got to praise our lead smart contract engineer, who is just an absolute genius. He's French, but, but honestly, he he's like yeah he's young, but he's an absolute um he's an absolute genius. Basically, he's the smartest person I know. So what about like your your customer base though, like the people who are using your platform? Like, where are they majority based out of? Yeah, so uh, it's, a, it's a good question. Um, and our, our majority, and this is probably six months, nine months, 12 months ago, I could easily answer and say our largest user base uh, is states based. Um, and then uh, you, you kind of get a bit of a tussle between some major kind of European countries. But, you know, Turkey is a big country. Um, in terms of our user base, and that's basically because Avalanche is, has a, a really heavy Turkish following. You know, they're very pro crypto as well. Um, and it's more difficult to tell you now because of how much speculative farming is happening, particularly with Layer Zero. Like, if I look at web analytics stats now, it's going to tell me Russia uh, and Ukraine, and there's a lot, and we know there's a lot of farming, like you know, being rooted through there. Um, but it, I think China is also uh, it's definitely an up and coming country as well, like you, you pointed out. And I think they seem to be moving more pro crypto. So, you know, we can definitely see growth coming from that region already, uh, which is great. You know, it's definitely um, a slightly weaker area in terms of our user base. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, it's a very global user base, but it's, I would you'll just highlight again, it's actually quite difficult to, to tell from web analytics stats yeah. now just because of the amount of farming. Maybe happening. that means uh, finally the China FUD is over. <laughs> We've been hearing it for years. <laughs> All FUD is yeah, over, were... officially over. Sorry, just kidding. No, nah, they're, they're always going to FUD. They'll, they'll have tactical FUD. No, great question, great question. And, and you guys just recently, you know, expanded to Arbitrum, Great numbers over there. 
over 250k wallets, unique wallets facilitated facilitated over 2.5 billion in trading. Um, why did you choose Arbitrum? Arbitrum was very much a chain that we were looking at for a long time because uh, due to some synergies uh, between protocols that had deployed on Avalanche uh, during the Avalanche peak time, like GMX and similar, we had a lot of community members which were happily work doing their things on both chains. And, you know, for us, community was always key and core. Without the Joe community, Trader Joe will not be where it is. And that's why respecting the community and gathering towards uh, the, their previous desires and future users was also important uh, because we found that uh, the Arbitrum chain had also a very vibrant uh, DeFi ecosystem with very interesting protocols uh, very nice alignments towards decentralization and advanced uh, financial protocols trying to disrupt the space. And uh, we knew that Liquidity Book was the right product for a chain like Arbitrum and that the Arbitrum uh, native user base uh, would have been capable of appreciating it and understanding it. That's why we expanded there, because we believe that uh, the Arbitrum communities, protocols, developers, and users are very much aligned with our mission of making DeFi accessible to everyone in a very vibrant and innovative space that, that wants to create new, new protocols. Yeah, they have the best memes by far. Like uh, a lot of the native protocols there, the communities are absolutely hilarious. Uh, I absolutely love the vibe. Um, yeah, and it kind of felt like Arbitrum is just uh, the neighbor of Avalanche as well for DeFi communities. So I'm keen to know, like, actually, you know, what, what chains do you guys use frequently? Like, what are your favorite chains? I know uh, Dow is a uh, Arbitrum Maxi kind of. Uh, oh, but really quick, I wanted to say your intern on your Trader Joe account is funny as fuck. <laughs> so I just wanted to give you a quick shout out. But yeah, that's a great question. Maybe let's throw it around the room. Like, what chains do you guys use? Yeah, you're right. I'm a huge fan of Arbitrum. Uh, I think Layer 2s have a, have a long, long, long future. Uh, so not just optimistic world, but... Uh, I haven't really deep dived too much into ZK Sync, but I think uh, it's going to be one of those chain that or roll up that I have to look into. Uh, I'm very excited for Polygon 2.0. Uh, I think the work that they've done for the past four or five years is just, you know, show itself. So uh, you can't bet against Medic or Paul now. Uh, but yeah, other than that, man, uh, I'm actually, and me that, that might surprise some uh, people in the, in the room, but uh, I'm bullish on the on Binance Smart Chain. I think they do some great work. Uh, I love the work that they're doing with the, the optimism uh, layer. So I'm excited for that. Uh, and am I missing a chain, like a Medic? Uh, BSC, Arbitrum, obviously Ethereum, uh, classic. But uh, I would love, love for one day to hear something good come out of Cardano. Uh, I haven't given up on it yet. I don't have any Cardano, so, you know, it's not financial advice. I, I just think it would be sad for Charles Hoskinson to be all talk and, and no walk. Oh, my God, that's funny. What about you? Oh, go ahead, Blue, <laughs> and then we'll let Tammy go. <laughs> Tell me like no, no comments. No comments. Tammy, what about you? What's in your MetaMask uh, networks? Um, I would say mine is more so Polygon. I do um, Binance as well and Ethereum. Cool. Yeah. And um, Brooke, you there? You want to chime in? We'll go to... Okay, so I'll go. I have um, Ethereum, Avalanche. Uh, what else do I have? Polygon. Be a, definitely Binance chain. Uh, that's probably what's in my MetaMask. What am I, What else am I missing? Yeah, I think that's it. Oh, and I and I do dabble on Solana as well. 
So yeah, I think most of us here are like multi-chain, you know, there's a few maxis, but they still dabble around everywhere else. What about you, Sol? I laugh because you said there's a few maxis and I think I'm the few. <laughs> you only have <laughs> Ethereum on your MetaMask? Um, yeah, I haven't touched my Binance stuff in probably a year and a half, or maybe a year. I, back when like Come Rocket and everything was going on, that's like the last time I touched like Binance. <laughs> oh man, that, that's like the same as me. <laughs> well, up until up until the fact we deployed there, of course. <laughs> the the shit coins on BSC last bull run were they were really fun and, and unique. But did you also sell the Elon yeah. Musk tweet? Do I have the what? The Elon Musk tweet. Which uh, one? Of the meme coin you mentioned. Oh, oh yes. Wait. Did he tweet about yeah. it? Yeah, did that he? was the top. Oh, that's so funny. I had to check my bags. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure that whole platform died. They like shut down their um their like NFT market. That's where I was getting all my nudes from. Oh Lord. All right. <laughs> <laughs> uh no, what I was gonna say, I also have DFK chain on my networks, which is a subnet of Avalanche. So yeah, I do dabble around to the subnets and all that other stuff too. So so yeah, hopefully that gives you some some feedback. But I think pretty much everywhere a lot of people here, except for a few, are are multi-chain. And and I and I guess with that, like, um, do you uh are you are you looking to maybe expand to other chains? Like how do you see Joe? you know, uh, uh, growing in this multi-chain future. Nobody wants to give alpha. I'll let David give the alpha. We are very, um, we are very methodological in how we consider to expand. We do not like to be first because we want to have full full and max conviction of what we are doing. So we look, we study, we make cases, we evaluate. And when we feel is the right time, which should not be too late, we move. That's that's a David A answer for we're not giving you the alpha. Your spaces is too popular. We'd probably drop it if it was a smaller amount of people listening. No, but you know what? I appreciate that answer that it's not just like, oh, let's jump on the next hype, right? Because we see that a lot in this space. Some new L1 spins up and, and you know, um, a, a few months later, it's like crickets there. So the fact that you guys are uh, with intention picking and, and uh, analyzing where to go, I think that speaks volume that you're not just chasing the next hype. Yeah, it's also about community, yeah, you know, when we, go, exactly. when we go somewhere, we want to be part of the community. We want to be every protocol's best friend and most accessible team, always open to have a chat and to evaluate what could be done. And you cannot do this if you go everywhere. There's many protocols that are deployed on 20 chains and they are irrelevant on all 20. And that's really not our intention. Yeah, it, it's really difficult as well. Like, there's so many chains that are popping up, um, and you know, we ultimately we went to Arbitrum because you know we're bullish on the future of uh, um, the the tech, but also the community vibes are fantastic. We went to BSC because um, you know Binance are essentially backing it, and they're absolutely huge. It's very well supported, and it's got such a great heritage with with, with DeFi and its history um, of how it's helped to shape the you know, DeFi as as we kind of all know it. Um, and then, you know, we'll, we'll make future decisions and we'll probably be revealing something at ECC um, uh, based on, you know, sounds kind of rational, um, like objective um, decisions that, you know, we've all come to an agreement internally. There's just, it's just no way to deploy absolutely everywhere. Um, it's, it, you know, there's, there's so many chains that are about to start deploying as well. Um, it, it's kind of, it, I'm, I'm personally, I'm, I'm generally worried about user liquidity and even that fragmentation that's, that's going to start occurring. So, you know, to roll it back to like layer zero, this type of tech is going to be really fundamental for dApps to start integrating to kind of, you know, remove the barriers that um, that's going to start popping up with all these different chains. I think that's a great point. Um, Dower Tammy, any comments or questions? 
I do have one. Um, because I think earlier you guys mentioned that uh, your your model, right? Uh, I think it's called uh, liquidity book, right? It, it feels like it's a a hybrid between maybe like uh, the the typical like liquidity providers that we see on DEXs and the order books that that we see on centralized exchanges. So, okay, can you maybe uh, just uh, I'm sure you touched on it already, but can you kind of explain the difference between the three? And a secondary question, if you guys will want to touch on, is obviously like a lot of reason we have those those DEXs, the AMM based DEXs, because it, it was really hard to to create or to replicate the the order book model on chain. But as the the performances of chains uh, and rollups start to get better and better and better, and transactions are cheaper, uh, do you see that potentially in the future we'll see? more or even a dominance of on-chain order books uh, or maybe models similar to yours. And I guess the departure from AMM. So do you feel like AMM still have a, or different than order books still have a better model or better advantages over order books, even though both can be on-chain now? Sure. We, we see uh liquidity book as uh horizontal order book but liquidity book has been built with amm in mind because we know what users want users want to make a swap and get an now and get the tokens after the swap and the amm model is what may what makes uh, DeFi on-chain activities are fun and accessible. Uh, so the way it's built is that we have vertical stacks of liquidity bins. So imagine individual price points being their own liquidity pool, uh, following what Blue mentioned before uh, as a uh, constant... Uh, constant sum formula, which means that when a trade is made in the same bin, let's imagine one AVAX is $15 and someone makes a trade, then the trade happens uh, within the $15 price point. And if there is enough liquidity to make a trade of any of the two directions, then the trade happens with zero slippage. If the trade is bigger than the reserve in the active bin, the current bin that tells the price, the next bin, so imagine 15.1, becomes the active bin and the remaining part of the trade is made at that price point. I'm just doing fictional numbers now to make it understandable. So you have these vertical stacks of liquidity and they all happen at zero slippage. Like if you will make a limit order on chain and then if it's actually a market order, you first fill the first price and then move in the, in the, se in the direction of your trade. So this is one of the unique aspects of our model. Liquidity providers could decide to put their liquidity all in bin, uh, all in one bin, in 15 bins, or select them individually, adding or remove liquidity, uh, like if it was an order book, but it, they are all single individual liquidity bins. But it's all off chain, right, David? Excuse me? It, it's off. It's no, it's on-chain. On All on-chain. 100% on, on, on the blockchain. So wait, so if I may... Accessed and read at, at any time, anyone can visualize how much liquidity there is, and they're all in the smart contract. Okay. Oh, for, for, okay, gotcha, gotcha. Oh, hey. You clarifying. Hey, Nico, uh, thanks for chiming in there. And, and great question, Dow, as usual. And thanks, David, for the clarification. Tammy, I saw you. Did you want to? I saw you and me. Did you want to uh, comment on something? Yes, hopefully. My dogs were going nuts just a minute ago, so hopefully they'll be quiet. Um, I was just curious with your, um, with your platform or your website, for people that maybe um, are newer 
or don't understand DeFi as much, are there, is there a place to go on there to uh, educate yourself? Do you guys have any material on there um, about that, about the services that you offer? Yeah, so um, we, you know, we do have a, uh, a well-stacked content center. It's hosted on Intercom, um, and that's kind of linked at the bottom of uh, the, the footer on the website. Um, but I would say it's very, it's very much positioned for, you know, DeFi users, um, not necessarily someone who's brand new to crypto. Uh, it's, um, and it, I'm, in addition to that, I would always recommend people who, if they do have a question to, to join the Trader Joe Discord, it's, you know, it's well stacked with lots of members who are always happy to share and give their insights, et cetera. Thanks. Great question, Tammy. Go ahead, Dal, and then we'll go to Lee to see if he has a question before we wrap up. Oh, Blue, you, you want to chime in? Or he's just unmuted. Okay, go ahead, Dal. Yeah, so I, I know my question is a little bit all over the place, but the, the second part was um, obviously like a lot of uh, roll-ups and, and chain now enable uh, on-chain order books, right? So, so so I get that you guys have a, a model, a hybrid model, but if you had to pick between the two, right, if you if you fast forward in, in 10 years from now and DEX is all over the place, do, do you think there will be a, a great tendency to see more, um, I would say, the traditional AMM or more of a return to, to order book, like maybe not exactly order book, but like maybe more to your, to your, to your style, like a hybrid, but that looks and feel like more order book than an AMM? I've got to say, I just think it's going to be a merger of the both. Hmm. I'm going to take that as, I, I don't know, as the A word. Like ultimately, Alpha, what, no. you know, what we find is... <laughs> I'm kidding. Go ahead, Blue. Like the the majority of users that, that we serve, that we want to be able to serve, that have yet to even come into DeFi, they just want a simple experience. They want everything one click um, as easy as possible. And order books are fantastic, but for the majority of people who want to kind of empower themselves with, with access to, to DeFi, with access to you know providing liquidity, yield farming, whatever you want to call it, um, is too complex for them. Uh, and they just want a one-click solution. I mean, that's kind of why we're building auto pause. It's almost like an automated layer that removes the complexity of providing liquidity completely. So under the hood, we can have this kind of hybrid order book AMM model where, you know, we're automating liquidity at, at granular price points. But um, ultimately, all the, all the user has to do is deposit and withdraw and hopefully get rewards for it. We like simple. We like simple. Great, great question. Um, let's see. Lee, I saw you came up here. Did you have a question or a comment for the team? Right. No, Nico. Anything else to chime in or or ask before we wrap up? Yeah, I think I think. Can you hear me now? Because I feel like I got it, it was a little delayed. So if somebody can give me like a like a confirmation. Yeah, you're good. Okay, Go okay. ahead. Um, I I like how Blue put it because I the fact um I kind of came in hot, but I've been having like the glitches with the spaces. I like how he formatted uh his response to. It's too complex, right? You can't just go from uh, mass adoption, like right off the rip, to have these people manage their money and then, oh, my wallet's stolen. It's like, well, I mean, you, that's that's what the the whole process is. So I like how you formatted that into it's too complex. This is going to be a fast track to help people get onto that, and that's why I came up with a kind of a hot. Uh, notion is it on chain, off chain? Like, um, that's like where I was coming in at, but um, yeah, I like how you formatted that. That was a, a, a great way, so just wanted to chime in on that. Yeah, thanks, really appreciate that feedback. Thanks, Nico. Sorry phone's disconnected i i'm back but yeah so um before we wrap up so what's next for trader joe what can we expect i know you guys are going to be at eth cc anything else that maybe you guys want to leave us with be before we wrap it up 
Yeah, actually, if, if anyone else is going to EFCC um, and you want to come to our party on the 18th, please give me a, a DM. I can send you over a link and, a, and approve you. Um, and we'll definitely be, there'll be some sort of announcements there, a, a speech from my co-founder, and we're, we're giving away merch as well at our party. So uh, it's really well attended. Um, and yeah, if you want to go um, and meet some of the team, yeah, just give me a DM. Uh, and I'll let Davide share on uh, what's to come for Q3 or more. Well, we we are always preparing new features like on-chain limit orders, uh, managed uh, managed vaults for uh, liquidity providers, and series of improvements to make uh, the accessibility of DeFi liquidity providing and swapping as easy as possible. Uh, so we are all looking forward to update you all when we will be on our next venture. Looking forward to it. Go ahead, Dale. Yeah, I, I got one last spicy question, if I may. Uh, what's your take on the Uniswap v4? Bullish, uh, nothing burger? Many of the features that were included in before, like uh, volatility, uh, volatility oracles, we have built it on day one on Liquidity Book, which with white paper published uh, la summer of last year, for example. Lim on chain limit orders, we have already that we have, we, are, we have them already audited by the time Uni before was out. Uh, with their announcement. So it's exciting to see that we are building things that Univ4 is saying is the future, but they will keep under their license because we have already done most of the things that they have uh, announced on their V4 white paper, but we, da we did it by ourselves on our protocol. So we are very bullish on some of the features that they've released and absolutely looking forward of people using these things as we had conceived them from the beginning. Love that answer. Yeah, it's good to see that you guys are building. I think competition is good because the end result is that we as a user get better, a, a better user experience. So, um, Really glad to have you guys here this week. Again, if you, in case you missed it, you can go back to the beginning and listen to our convo with Trader Joe, not to be confused with the grocery store. Um, hope you guys learned something today. And yeah, we appreciate you guys being here. Any last words or comments? I want to say really fast, um, that's probably a little directed at me with the Trader that Joe's. That was you. Because, I'm sorry. Look, <laughs> no, I'm sure everybody, there's quite a few, but seriously, the first time I ever heard it, like I, I heard it obviously before um, the space was scheduled, but the first time I heard it, I'm like, oh my gosh, Trader Joe's. Like, honestly, here in the US, Trader Joe's is one of my favorites. So, um, but I really appreciate the information. Uh, I thank you guys for coming and explaining things. It's it's neat for me to kind of see the parallels with the banking world that I come from. So DeFi is extremely interesting to me um, and I'm still learning as well. So I appreciate all the helpful information and um, everything that you guys talked about today. Thanks, Tammy. Blue David, any last thank comments? You. Yeah, just thank you so much for your time. Um, and thank you to, to all the speakers for really great questions as well. It's, it's been, it's, yeah, it's just been really awesome. Thank you so much. It's yeah, great vibe. Keep, keep this energy. I could see a lot of coffee infused, infused uh, type of conversation. So keep it going. Never stop drinking coffee. Yeah, and try the ginger shots.
We'll do. Honestly, we'll do ginger really shots <laughs> and crypto. Crypto and ginger shots for next week. But yeah, it's been great here uh, to have you guys here. Connect with Dow. Dow hosts a lot of DeFi-focused um, spaces. Um, so we definitely love talking DeFi here as well. But yeah, it would be great to connect and, you know, um, yeah, and just do more stuff together. But yeah, you guys are always welcome back. Um, we're going to keep it going to the second part of our show. Um, but if you need to drop off, completely understand we're just going to talk about what's been happening with crypto and nfts but again it's been a pleasure having you guys here oh oh wow claps as well (laughs) i'm gonna drop off but i I do tune in regularly to these shows because i do enjoy listening to them um so yeah I'll, i'll look forward to the next one Thanks, Blue. Yeah, and shout out to whoever the intern is be- behind the Trader Joe account. Make sure to give him a follow. Funny memes uh, if you want, if you like a good laugh. So make sure to give uh, them a follow. But yeah, thanks everybody for. That's me, oh, by that's the way. You? Oh, Sorry. look at you, Blue. <laughs> yeah, you're funny. Right. Bye, guys. Bye. Thank bye. Thank you. Thank you.